Rushing Wind Biker Church at 10 Peach Tree Court in Holbrook, New York, the crossroads of freedom and faith. God bless you all. Jesus loves you all. How we doing? Awesome. Awesome. That was, that was a little better. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you for this time to come together in your house. Lord, we thank you for, uh, for family. We thank you that you are a chain breaker. Lord, we thank you that you are a deliverer. Lord, as we, uh, as we walk through this life, and, and for our, ourselves here, we just thank you that, that you have delivered us. Lord, that you are, are constantly fixing us and putting us back together. Uh, Lord, but let us also know that we are a work in, pro in, in progress. And Lord, that there's still much to be done in each of our lives. Lord, that the evil one is always lurking, is always active, is always interfering, trying to come between us and our, our appointed destiny that you have called us to. And Lord, tonight we just ask your Holy Spirit to reign in this place. Uh, Lord, that, that just power comes from within these walls, Lord, and just lifts up your people. And Father, we, uh, we stand against all the forces of darkness that would want to interfere with what you want to say to your people today. Lord, the very, the very powers that we are going to discuss today. And Lord, we know that when we, we, we look into the dark things to get an understanding of our enemy that the, uh, the forces of darkness are not happy with us. For they want to deceive and they want to interfere. And Lord, we just for, ask for a special anointing and protection in this sacred space tonight. Lord, as we strategize and we put together just an army of believers sold out for your son. Lord, that we might know and be prepared for the battle that faces us every time we walk out those doors. We thank you for your empowerments and the blood of your son that is more powerful than any force in the universe. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. So uh, I'm excited. That's a surprise, right? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be back. I mean, even though when I'm not here, it's usually like for a week. Uh, it seems like a long time because I really, I really love being here and sharing with, with our family and, and, uh, and just fellowshipping. You know, just the moments we get to, to share um, is, is very special, and, and when it's not there is when, when you really notice it. You know, we can take things for granted, can't we? Yeah. We can take each other for granted. Because yeah. face it, we're together more than most churches. Yeah. And you don't know how much that blesses God. You know, and when we, we look at his first church, it said that they broke bread daily, and they fellowship daily. Uh, unfortunately, in our environment, in our day and age, daily just probably isn't realistic. Um, though one day I wonder what God's going to do, because we may be forced to, uh, to break bread together every day, because we may not have the opportunity to be out there in the world at some point, like some of the church around the world. You know, and um, I'm excited about what, uh, what God has given me today. Um, it's, it's a message unlike anyone I've ever preached. And one of the, uh, the advantages of preaching through books of the Bible is you're, you're forced to talk about everything. And, and not that I avoid things, but if you came here for a kindergarten class today, this ain't the day for kindergarten. You know, this is a very, a very deep subject. And, um, and I thank God that you can handle it. And you'll understand. Because I'm going to talk about something that I would venture to say many, many pastors don't want to deal with from the pulpit. And that's demons. Uh, yes, you heard right. Demons. Um, but it's in the Bible. And it's an important part of how we navigate this world. And I think it's not talked about enough. You know, when we look at the armed forces in our country, they spend a lot of time investigating the enemy and talking about the enemy. And, and how can you strategize when you don't understand and you're not, not afraid? You, know, you can't be afraid to talk about these things. 
And sometimes, you know, I even wonder, you know, it's a, this is, this is a PhD class today. Um, because this is the deep things of God. Because sometimes people don't want to hear about the, the spiritual deep things and the real battles that are going on. And, and we have a lot of empowerments and we have a lot of really, really great things and positive things that Jesus has for us in his word. But he also addresses demons and Satan and darkness. And so today we're going to uh, we're going to talk about some of the things of darkness. And what I want to talk about first, you know, share a little bit about my life. Uh, you know, and, and some people here will, because you know they know the, the person involved, um, they'll kind of understand. Uh, when I was growing up um, in a home that uh, you know you've heard me talk about how broken our home was with the loss and and, um, and just the tragedy that that we were raised in that sometimes wasn't apparent to even our own family outside of our immediate family. Um, and, and, and my mother really took the brunt of the beating and, and the life that was, was allowed by God, because we know God allows everything to happen for a reason, and you know some of the people in this room, actually I'm going to venture to say many people in this room are the fruit of the life my mother had to leave to come to Christ that would eventually lead me to come to Christ and other members of my family that would down the road brought me closer to Jesus Christ because of my brokenness that would lead me into ministry that would lead me into being led to start a church and, and we're here and, and my mother had a very big part in this whole thing but as I um, as I talk about this particular subject um, my mother had to deal with a lot of heartache and brokenness like some people here have and, you know, and she took the, the, the burdens and the, the, uh, the overbearing weight of a lot of things in life, very personal, because she was a loving, caring, emotional person. As great as that is, it leaves you susceptible to the dark powers to really weigh down on you heavily. And so my mother had, had, a, had a nervous breakdown, maybe more than one, and, and, and just her, her psyche was broken. And she had to be medicated for, for several years because of the darkness that had come into this life through situations, through tragedy, but as we're going to talk about, demonic powers that empower dark things. See, we deal with the flesh and we deal with the world, and we know things, things happen, right? Life happens. So accidents might happen, loss might happen, you know, but, but now something happens, and then there are dark forces that surround that situation and can move us into dark places of depression and, and my mother took a lot of things on her and um, and sometimes we don't talk about um, darkness enough you know we're we're people of light amen, amen. and we're supposed to be the light you know, and, and, uh, and we know about angels, and we talk about angels, and we pray that God will surround us with angels, and, and that we will have um, uh, spiritual entities that, that protect us when we're on our motorcycles and out on the road. And sometimes when I feel really burdened, I will pray that God encamps this place with angels to ward off um, the enemy. And um, we don't talk about the enemy enough. Not that we should be obsessed, because you can't get obsessed with the enemy. We are not to get obsessed with the enemy. So understand that this is not about getting obsessed, but understanding our enemy. Because we are aware of angels. We talk about angels, you know. But we're ignorant on many levels of what's going on in this spiritual battle. And there is a very dark the spiritual battle. And so demons are as real as angels. As a matter of fact, knowing, knowing the scripture, and many here know that demons are angels that have decided to leave God to follow another leader and were cast out of heaven when Satan, Lucifer, was cast out of heaven. And one-third of the angels went with him. And they're among us as we go out and live in this world. But, but sometimes Christianity does not want to talk about it. It's 
a matter of fact, there was a survey that I believe more than half of believers don't believe there's a hell. Well, they believe there's a heaven, and they believe there are angels, and, and for some reason, they, they don't want to believe there's a hell, so they don't, they don't believe God would do that. You know, but the reality is God didn't do that, because we voluntarily accepted that. You know, and so today I want to talk about something that is very sensitive, something that, that you need to know to be able to navigate in this world. My mother's story was a victory story because with the, the massive burdens, psychologically, spiritually, and, and some even physically, the day she surrendered her life to Christ was miraculous. And very much like the story we're going to talk about today in the scripture. It was like that. And, and what we're going to talk about is, is what, what oppressed my mother was not one demon, but many demons. And I, want, I want to give us a little education on, on just the spirit realm and demons in particular, because we know that Satan has an army. And Satan has an army that has a hierarchy and foot soldiers. And, and just like we have archangels like Michael, and, uh, and Gabriel, you know, and, and then we have, we have regular messengers that God sends as angels. It's the same thing in the powers of darkness. And we need to know it's there. We need to not close our eyes and, and, and just make believe it doesn't exist and it's not as big as it actually is. Because as this world gets darker and darker and turns away from God, the activity of the enemy is becoming more widespread there is more rain being given to these other entities that are not good angels, but demons. And every once in a while you'll hear me kid when it's like a particularly hard time that, that somebody turned the power grid off at the Ghostbusters station again. Uh, I hope most people have seen that movie. Because sometimes I bring something up, it's like... Anyway. So, uh, if I'm not going to explain it, see the movie. You know? But... Um, We've been talking about this journey that Jesus is going on, and we're up to chapter 5 now in Mark, and now we're going to see a story about uh, a man who's demon-possessed. And people can be demon-possessed. Do, do you realize that? All right, do you also realize that people who are Christians that are filled with the Holy Spirit and belong to Jesus Christ cannot be demon-possessed, but they can be demon-oppressed? And heavy burdens can come from the outside in to where almost it feels and it may seem like they're possessed. Uh, possession is different. It's, it's a different challenge when you're battling these entities. And so we, we've seen Jesus. He's come off, off the, uh, the, uh, the healing and, and the things he's done. He, and then he got in the boat. Remember we talked about the boat two weeks ago. You know, he said, uh, let's go over there. Right? because there was massive crowds. He had to preach from the water, and they were kind of, they must have been like stepping into the water because they wanted to get close to Jesus. And he said, let's, let's go to the other side of the sea. And so, remember the story, they go, and then the winds came, and, and the, the waves were filling the boat with water, and, uh, and Jesus is asleep. And, and not to recap, but they were freaking out because Jesus was asleep. So they woke Jesus up, because they figure, if we're going to die, Jesus has got to die awake like the rest of us die. You know? And the reason I say that, because at the end of that, that, that little segment there, um, he, his, he just says, peace be still. And the wind stops, and the sea is glass. And then these guys who are supposed to know this is like the Son of God were scared out of their mind and say, who is this man that he can even command the sea and command the wind? And so that's where we ended up, and now he gets to the other side of the, uh, of the water, and now a guy shows up. And as soon as they get there, it's like Jesus has got one foot out of the boat, and ministry starts again, and the enemy is at him. And so I'm going to read a... a particularly long portion of scripture. It's going to be 20 verses. And we're going to talk about this man who is demon possessed. And I think we're going to understand a lot more about the spirit realm and what each one of us deals with and how we can address these things. 
Starting in verse 1, it says, They came to the other side of the sea, and to the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. No one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken to pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from the distance, he ran up and bowed down before him and shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do you have with, do we have with each other, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. I like when demons say that. You know you can be in a place where they're saying that to you. That's a cool place to be. Because I don't know about you, but I enjoy tormenting demons. Just a hang up I got like this. For he had been saying to them, come out of that man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. He began to implore him earnestly not to send them out into the country. There was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain, and the demons implored him, saying, Send us into the swine, so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine, and the herd rushed down a steep bank into the sea, and about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. The herdsmen ran away and reported it to the city and the country, and the people came to see what it was all about. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed, and in his right mind. The very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man, and all about the swine, they began to implore him to leave the region. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him, and he did not let him. But he said to him, go home to your people. Report to them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. You know, in Scripture there's many evidences of what demonic um, activity does to people. In... Um, Matthew chapter 12 talks about the demon causing blindness and people being mute, a person being mute where they couldn't speak. In Luke chapter 9, convulsions are caused by a, a demon. In Matthew chapter 17, lunacy and craziness are caused by a demon. The story we have here has, has many symptoms. You know, many symptoms. He was just, um, he would scream, he was being tormented in his mind and, and um, he had amazing strength because demons can empower human beings with amazing strength and he was cutting himself something I think we're all aware goes on today and it is absolutely a sign of demonic activity you know because I, I firmly believe that that disorders that are of the mind are spiritual in nature. You know, and, and, and sometimes, most times, man wants to treat spiritual issues with fleshly solutions. And the best they can do is, is try to calm the symptoms. And they never cure the problem, which is spiritual in nature. And it's entities that science and medicine know nothing about. And so rather than treat, which can only be treated in the spirit, and really only through Jesus Christ, they decide to get rid of symptoms and feel they've, they've accomplished something. From this story, we learn a couple of things about demons. Number one, they can possess people. I think we understand that. Uh, maybe you're here and you haven't had any kind of awareness or conversations about demons. Um, they're not just movie creatures. Um, they're actual real entities that the enemy has within our midst, and they do possess people. 
from time to time. We learn that many demons can be in the same person. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because that's something I think might be a new concept to some people here. Uh, but it talks about a legion. There's a legion for we are many. A legion in the Romans, Roman army was 6,000 soldiers. So in the vernacular of that, that description, this man had 6,000 demons. And over his life, probably attached one by one, by one, by one. And started with a little beachhead that the enemy put in. And then more life and more bad decisions and more guilt and more shame and, and things in one by one. And now this man has amassed this, this army that is attacking him, but also being used to attack the world through him. Another thing we learn is demons like to live among the dead and not the living. See, demons don't like this space because you are alive and you are quickened by the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. They are very uncomfortable around the living. And they, they're out there in the world because we know that if you're not born again and quickened by the Holy Spirit, your spirit is dead. And so anyone that is out of faith and, 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 and the follower of Jesus Christ is dead spiritually. And that's where the enemy likes to lurk and likes to do his work because he wants to keep them in that place and torment them and at times use them to affect other people, even believers. We see here in this story that they can physically overpower people and physically empower people. This man broke chains. You know, and, and some of you probably know stories of people who have, have just done pretty incredible feats of strength that were very evil people. So demons can supersede the physical, just like the Holy Spirit can supersede the physical. And demons look to cause pain in any way they can. Um, this man was tormented to the point where he was cutting himself. See, a common thought of someone who's a cutter, and it's very prominent in this day and age because the enemy and demons are very prominent in this day and age, is, is cutters will often say, the pain I feel when I cut myself distracts me from the pain I'm feeling inside. And so we see the, the, the tragedy. Uh, the good thing is it's identifiable if you know. You know, and, and when you know someone who cuts, you can identify, okay, this is a, a situation that Jesus needs to invade. And it really needs to be addressed very powerfully by the people of God. And, and, and I dare say people who are knowledgeable and mature people of God. Because a weak Christian around someone who has got a powerful demon at times can be more affected and oppressed by the demon than the work that they actually can accomplish because they haven't reached a place of empowerment and faith. And we've seen people who have tried to put themselves in, with all good intentions to help and be in places that they were never uh, qualified to be in. You know? um, we have three things we face in this world. We have, the, we have to deal with the flesh, right? We just have this thing that since the, the fall of man, we've got to deal with you know, tensions and, uh, and, and lusts and, and things we want and, and pride and all these things that are part of our, our flesh. And then there's the world that comes at us with all these different uh, corruptions and different things that try to draw us into sin, into the world's system instead of uh, the spiritual world and the things that are good and the things that God says are beneficial to us, not just spiritually, not just in a God way, but so our life is incredible. And so we see there's, there's incredible forces that are coming against us, and then the third is is the one that not just empowers the other two, but the one that amplifies the other two, which is what I really want to get to today. And that's actual demonic forces and Satan and the devil himself, who is a real entity. As much as God is a real entity, Satan is a real entity. And we need to firmly understand that. And so what we want to do is we want to address a spiritual battle, spiritually. Amen? Amen? Because you can't beat this powers of darkness with fleshly 
weapons, or fleshly defenses. You have to fight spirit with spirit. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 during the, uh, the, the armor of God discussion, and he says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, and against the world forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. If you see, Paul has subtly given you almost a hierarchy. He's given you a pecking order almost, that there are, you know, if you want to call them generals and lieutenants and corporals and privates, that they're all part of this, this army. He also says to the church in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians 10, the weapons we fight are, are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, break every chain. Amen? Amen. Because we've all had chains. Everyone in this room has had chains and have oppressions that demons have put on you. All right, we're going to call a spade a spade here tonight. All right, because these are the ones we're fighting against. You know, when we talk about depression, we're talking about a demonic empowerment that works into your mind and causes depression. But don't be fooled into thinking it's some mind thing as psychologists would want you to think. It's a spiritual attack that is being reinforced and is usually amplifying some trauma you've had that might be of the world, might be in the flesh. All right, who is that? <laughs> Not that that wasn't appropriate, actually. <laughs> you know. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captivity, every thought, and make it obedient and submission, in submission to Jesus Christ. That's our battle, to take every thought. Because the thoughts are where the battles are. The things that happen to us, you know, if we have an illness, the illness is not the battle. It's what happens after that illness. If we have loss in our family, it's not the loss that's the battle. It's what happens after that loss. Because we live in this world, we're going to be susceptible to the things of just living a human life in this day and age. But the thing is, once a trauma comes in, the demons are there. And which way are you going to go? Are they going to drag you? Are they going to attach to you and keep you in a place of despair? Because they come into every situation. And just as a side note, um, I believe I believe in medication. I don't want to go, I don't want to, to think people I don't. But I believe I believe when someone has a, a, a psychological issue, I do believe it's 100 percent spiritual. When something comes into our life that's 100% spiritual, it affects us physiologically. There's no doubt. It changes our chemical levels and it changes things. And so that's why they can get rid of symptoms. But the thing is, when you come to Jesus Christ and you start to let God start to develop uh, a way to attack that in the spiritual, the medication's got to slowly, eventually you don't need that. But the only way to do it is to identify this as a spiritual problem. And, and it's rare someone um, responds like my mom. No medication tomorrow. No cigarettes tomorrow. She was on two of the most, the strongest psychotropic drugs there are. You know, right then she was at a place where it was kind of precarious because if she had gotten in any more despair, if she had gotten in any dark places, they were still doing lobotomies back then. And it wasn't always off the table because my mother was, was, was not suicidal, but every day she asked my father, am I going to live today? And that's the dark place she was in. That's why I say she, was, she had many demons from the many things that came at her. Now, I want to point something out before I go forward because this is vital. Um, and some of you are going to need to hear this today. Because I, I think when we, we view Jesus' ministry and even in here in this space, we know that Jesus heals. And Jesus has gone out to the masses. And sometimes we don't understand that Jesus is here tonight for you. For you, the individual, every one of you. Jesus is here for the one. Because this is a, an interesting story, because Jesus said, let's go across the lake. Right? Across the lake, he encounters one. 
right? Actually, it was two, but this was the worst of the two, right? And then he gets back on the boat and leaves. So he orchestrated this because everything in Jesus' ministry was, was orchestrated and was led by God. Amen? We, we must believe that. And so Jesus saying, let's go across the, river, across the sea. He went all the way across the sea with the guys for one, possibly two. And then they, they chased him away because they were scared to death of this guy that got rid of a demon that. You know, it, it's amazing that, you know, Jesus could do the biggest miracle in, in the universe and just, whoa, go away. That's too, that's too huge. Uh, it's just it's messing me up. You know, it happened to the, the guys in the boat and it happened to the people here. It's like, we don't want this kind of power around us. You know, and they failed to see that the power was there for them. You know, they just knew that there was something that was defying everything that was human at the point. So we know that God can calm the storms and the sea, which he did. And we know that he can feed the masses, which he did. But I think there are many people here today that don't believe that Jesus would actually show up in this space tonight to speak to you individually. That you're the important one tonight. You know, yes, we're together. But I believe there are people that need to hear that Jesus is here for you. That he wants to deliver you. And get out of the broad sense that Jesus is here for everybody. Because that's true. But Jesus came for you. Whoever you are. And right now he came and he wants to encounter you. And he wants to look into your eyes. And meet you in this space tonight. And if you need to, to be delivered of something. There's something that you haven't been able to battle. Jesus is here for you. The one. Tonight. It's interesting where the boat lands because the boat lands in a very interesting space um, place of the Gadarenes or the Gasserines right? interesting that that particular place uh, known more often as the Gadarene place was actually the, the, uh, the area that most commentators and most historians say the, the tribe of, of Gad settled and if you remember in the movement of Israel, the, the tribe of Gad settled on the other side of the river because they didn't want to get into the, the promised land because there was wars to fight. So they settled over here on the east side of the Jordan River and the east side of the Sea of Galilee. And so they were not near the presence of God, which was the Ark of the Covenant. And voluntarily they stepped away from the presence of God because they didn't want to deal with the battles that would come by being close to God. And uh, if, if, you're not, if you're not understanding this life of faith, the closer you get to God, the bigger the battles. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I hope you know that. But we don't lose the battles. You know? As long as you know who's with you, you don't lose the battles. It doesn't matter how, how big they are. And what happened was these tribes, they kind of commingled with the societies over there and they, they compromised. You know, something we don't see that often in, in our day and age, right? You know? And so they, they commingled with the people to where they had herds of pigs? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't God say pigs were like unclean? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things when we get caught up in the world that because the world says it's okay, we kind of go along with the okay. And so it's interesting, you know, why, why pigs? Well, Shouldn't be, pigs shouldn't be around these people, right? But they had been at a place where they compromised. And there was a lot of commingling, crossbreeding. It was a watered down culture, many of whom came out of the Jewish tribe of Dan that settled on the easy side, on the side that was easy to compromise. And so we can see how a man like this could have developed through the culture which is like our culture when we walk out that door every day, right? It's compromise, unclean. Many things we do in our life um, as American citizens, free to do what we want in a culture that has all kinds of things that go into our eyes and go into our ears, that listening to things that are unclean. If we want to talk about spiritual battle and demons, we got to keep it real. 
because things we put in our eyes, things we put in our ears, are, are empowered by demonic forces. And, and, and you can fight that all you want, but it's everywhere in scripture, and you just look what it's doing in our culture. You know? And so we are living among the swine. You know? And that's why we try to fellowship more, but even when we're out there, we live as sojourners and not citizens of the world. Right? Because that's not our land. You know? And the reason we're out there is to show Jesus to the world. And so we don't let the things of the world affect us. And so it's interesting that this boat happens to go right there, you know, where the compromise is, where this guy is, it seems like he's waiting, waiting for the boat. Jesus knows that man is there before him. And when he says, let's cross over, he's saying, there's someone over there on the other side of the sea I need to encounter. And if you're here today, Jesus came all the way from wherever to be here with you tonight. It didn't matter because there was no sea that was, that was too big. There was no distance that was too big. And Jesus wants to meet you here individually tonight. And if it's speaking to you, understand Jesus loves you and he's here to, to make a change in your life and to do something special. You know, um, a couple of things we learn about Jesus in this story. We already learned a few things about demons, right? Important things we learn about Jesus. Number one, Jesus can judge demons. Jesus can judge pretty much everybody. You know? But Jesus is going to call a demon a demon. You know? And, and I don't know if you've ever been in those spaces. There are a couple of us here that have had these battles. And, and I want you all to understand that God is doing something in this space in the last couple of weeks, in the last couple of months. That there is a growth individually. Many of you are growing in ways you've never grown. We're also starting to see a little growth. The enemy is upset. We are going to see more attacks. And we're going to see more activity because the enemy wants to get involved and he wants to, to, side, to derail us, to sidetrack us, to attack us, and to take what God is doing here and kind of throw it off where it, it just doesn't have the testimony that God is building in this place. So be aware that demons are coming. All right? We can, in fellowship and love, keep them out of this building. And when they enter this building, we can demolish them Amen. on the spot. Amen. All right? This is what love and community and fellowship and coming together and worshiping together is all about. It's because when the, when the enemy comes in here, he either runs to the hills or he gets his butt kicked. Amen. Big time. Amen. You know, we have seen, since we started this church, we have seen... You know, and, and be ready. You know, we had, we had one woman in the, the first building that she came and she had, she had migraines because demons will manifest themselves sometimes in physical things. And so this woman, she was, and then she would, her, her personality would change. And then, uh, and then one night she comes and in the middle of the service, at the end of the service, she goes on the floor and almost goes into convulsions. And so uh, I'm, I was there and I think my wife was around and, and Kat, Keith's wife is there and we're praying over this woman and you can see she's being tormented. Her voice is changing. And then the hysterical thing is we had a guy who was coming to our church who thought he was a, a really strong Christian. So he comes over and said, how can I help? And, and this woman, blank stare, turned at him and said, get the blank out of here. Demons are real. Demons are real. And he ran with his tail between his legs, which was the smart thing for him. All right? If you ever get into a situation where you're facing something and it's making you anxious, leave the situation. You know, the Bible tells us to flee. Flee. The very appearance of evil. And if you're not up to the challenge, don't start to be like, you know, Rocky or, or Rambo and think you're just this great thing until you are. Because he will chew you up and he will spit you out and we've seen it happen. So be aware that these things are very real. We also had a, uh, another time that a woman that came to our church, sweet, sweet woman. And she had, she had migraines that would pass out a lot. And it was, it was, you could see there was some kind of oppression going on. She gave her life to Christ and she got a little bit better, but she still passed out. And she still had these migraines. And uh, we, have, we, we had a baptism class this afternoon. And so sometimes I bring this story up in baptism because baptism is an important thing. Sometimes God does a, a really incredible thing 
at a baptism. So this woman was coming to our church, and, um, and the day for her to be baptized came. We had the horse trough. Uh, maybe we'll do that one day again. We'll see. Um, and so she comes, and she's, she's freaking out. She, she's, there's wrestling going on. So my wife and another woman in the church had to bring her in the office, the whole service. Calm her down. Stop the anxiety. Stop the attacks. And so the end of the service came. We did the baptisms, and, and they brought her out. And you can see she was kind of sheepish, but you know she, she got, got there. And we, we baptized her, and she went under the water. And she came back up, and everything was different. She had a glow. She had peace. The headache she came with was gone. And then she said something that was really, really, it took me at the moment because I didn't know what she said. She said, I feel like I'm nine years old again. Someone was probably mid-50s. Mid-50s? Yeah, mid-50s. And so, okay, people say things when they get baptized. You know, and so after the service, I, uh, I asked her, that's kind of an odd thing to say when you get baptized. And she said, nah, Ski, when I was nine years old, my father dedicated me to Satan. And I've had this thing since I was nine. When I came out of the water, it was like everything was erased between when I was nine. And to think she had that demonic oppression for over 40 years. And, you know, it was, it was migraines. And it was stuff that wasn't, you know, we think demons sometimes are these big, you know, guys with horns and, you know, gross, ugly things. And, you know, the devil does his best work in, in subtlety. You know, and so we know that Jesus can judge demons and Jesus, Jesus can liberate people from demons. You see the pecking order in this story because we see a, a power structure. Um, the demon has been tormenting the man while Jesus torments the demon. So we see the pecking order here, you know, because demons can torment people, but Jesus and us with the Holy Spirit torment demons. And then we can eliminate the torment of people with God's will and God's grace. And it's an incredible thing to see when you see it. You know, Jesus liberates people. And maybe there are people today that need to be liberated because it's not just people who aren't saved, who have oppression. Um, if you're here and you don't walk as Jesus walked in this world, you have a demonic oppression. It could be subtle. You may only see it where you, like your, your anger flares up once in a while. Uh, but these things are all empowered by demons. Things are going to happen in this life, and it's just going to be part of life. We have health issues. We've got tragedies, financial issues, job issues, family issues, relational issues, accidents, encounters, disappointments, conflicts, clashes of personalities, clashes of ideas. And this whole world and this whole life in this human realm is, is filled with these these incidents that come into our life. And the thing is, what's going to happen at that point? Because when something comes into your life, and it might be the flesh, it might be the world, it might be one of these other things, that might not have been caused by a demonic entity. It might be part of the world. It might be part of our flesh. But the moment that happens, and there's a sense of weakness, the demons come in. And they try to do what they can. And so you get depressed or you have anxiety, or you have fear, or you have anger, right? That's the demonic activity that now has gravitated. You know, it's like it's an animal that smells blood, is exactly what it is. And when something happens in your life, and for a moment, you have a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of something, Satan and the demons smell blood, and they rush to the scene. And they want to open the wound, and they want to make the bleeding worse. This is real warfare we're in, people. And there are people here that have had many things that may have built up with you over the years. Because sometimes we build up things, we get callous, we build up things. And, and, and you know, you know if you're oppressed. You know, there's no shame in being a Christian that feels oppression. You know, it's something that's important that we need to identify and we need to come to the Lord, come to the altar, come to a brother and sister and say, Lord, I'm dealing with this thing. We had, we had this gentleman today that, that, that shared some things and, and was honest. And honesty will deliver you. Holding on to things will make it worse. And what you'll do is you'll allow more 
darkness and more demons to attach to that thing, and it gets stronger, and you get more depressed, and you get more entrenched, and now you, your life is, and, and then, then all of a sudden you're out there and, and, and you're, you're, you're cutting yourself. And you may not be cutting yourself, but you may be sabotaging everything in your life that's good. Because you're not making good decisions, because now the demonic entities have a, a beachhead. they got an army that's now affecting you. They know if they can affect you, they can affect everybody around you. And you probably know people like that. They don't just affect themselves, they take people down with them. And that's what demons do best. When we live on the other side of the river, when we live on the other side of the sea, and we're not living close to God's presence, the other side of the sea is out there in the world. And if you want to live and do life with the world, you're leaving yourself open to demonic attachments every moment of every day. We need to separate ourselves. You know, he's everywhere out there. Um, what happens is we start to accept the very darkness that we vile. Well, it's okay to be upset about that. You know, everybody else out there is reacting this way to that. Everybody else is watching that. Everybody else is doing that. It's okay for me to get mad at that, even though Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. But we're out in the world and everybody says, love your enemies. You know? And we see people out there getting revenge. And people will get revenge in the world. You know? It's got nothing to do with God. It's the very powers of darkness. They're empowering them. But now we have this flesh. And now we're living in that. And everybody else is getting away with stuff. And we want to get away with stuff. It's because we're living on the wrong side of the river. You know, and we're living there. We're not sojourning. We've made that our home. And so you end up with these attachments. You know, we can be corrupted and attacked by everything around us. And some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we've allowed over our lifetime the enemy to get beachheads and get some of these demonic attachments and we've hurt people around us. Anybody else qualify for that? I think if we're all honest, maybe, maybe all of us, but at least the vast majority. So it's not just us that's at stake. You know, sometimes the enemy wants to destroy you, sometimes he wants to use you to destroy other people. But everybody has some level of, and there might be a private hanging on to you. And it's not that, that, that evident until one day, you know, you're just this powerhouse in Christ. One day somebody, somebody says something. Somebody does something, and all of a sudden, it's, oh, where'd that come from? It's been hanging out. It's been waiting for that moment. And we need to be aware all the time. We need to understand we walk with the very power that raised Jesus Christ out of the grave. And we can fight everything that comes against us. Amen. There's nothing that, that is formed against us that will prosper. You know, God's speaking to someone here tonight. I don't know, maybe many people. Because I know there's people that are battling stuff and are, are bogged down with stuff. You know, and, and the fact that you, you've accepted this in your life is a, is, a, is a lie from the deceiver. You don't need to have these things in your life. You don't need to respond that way. You know, um, Jesus came into your graveyard to meet you. See, if you're living out in the world and you come to church on Sundays and maybe Wednesdays and maybe Fridays, but where you're really living your life, making decisions and doing stuff is out there, tonight Jesus came to the graveyard. And he, he, he wants to meet with you. He wants to say, I love you. You don't need to go through this anymore. And I believe God wants to deliver people here today. You know, maybe you've allowed demonic forces to empower you. Pride. You know? Anger. Materialism. Jealousy. They have that. I'd like that. You know? Uh, I don't want that. So I got that. You know, there's flesh things that we we deal with. Um, do you know we have entitlements? See, we're in an age of entitlement. You know, entitlement ruins faith. But the, the good thing is, is we have entitlement. Do you understand that? You understand it? We're entitled to joy. 
We're entitled to peace. It is ours. It can't be stolen from us. The world is out there feeling they're entitled for all the things of the flesh and all the things that feed into their ego, into their self. We have entitlements. Our entitlements put our head on the pillow at night and we can sleep. And I don't have to worry about what the guy down the block is doing because he, you know, he got a new bike. My bike's old. Yeah. But I have joy on my bike. You know? And I have peace because I don't pay me. You know? And, and I have hope. And that purpose. These are our entitlements. You can't buy them. Anything that's an entitlement in the world, you can buy. And anything you can buy loses its luster the minute you buy it. Because then there's a new one on the block. And then there's a bigger one. And then there's someone that got more of you what you always wanted. Alright? Joy. How many people would like to have joy? Well, you're entitled to it. You know? Get it. You like love in your life. You're entitled to it. Get it. Peace is at a premium. You know? I mean, the Bible says there's time that people are going to say peace, peace, but there's no peace. People in the world don't know what peace is. That's why Jesus said, you don't even understand. I got peace that you'll never figure out until you got it. We're entitled to these things. But we need to let go of these attachments. We need to understand the enemy has empowered these things in our life to steal everything. You know, everything that, that comes at us, the internal pain, is, is amplified by, the, by Satan. And he's using these influences. And yes, we deal with things, with sickness, with, with financial ruin, with death in the families, with accidents. Somebody had an accident, um, and we might have met them down in in, uh, in Tennessee, one of our, our brothers in North Carolina got into an accident the other day and he's home with the Lord. It's a tragic loss. So how, how do we process that? How does his family process that? Believers in Jesus Christ, how does his friends, his ministry partners process that? Because right at that moment, the enemy is coming in with all kinds of thoughts. And, and, and the scripture says, take every thought captive. We read that. Say, so, no, I'm not going to the dark places. I'm not going to be depressed because he's with the Lord. And I know God is good in all things. I'm going to dwell on that. We have to take this mind and capture it. Because that's where the battle is for. Jesus commanded all the demons to come out of that man and go into unclean pigs. And what Jesus was doing is Jesus was giving the people a picture of what happens when something is possessed by a demon. See, pigs are unclean, so Jesus wasn't worried about 2,000 pigs. But he wanted the people to see what was tormenting this man had such power, and it was a spiritual entity. He wasn't crazy. He wasn't bipolar. He wasn't all these things. He had a demonic oppression. And so if he would have just healed him, you know, the people would have seen it vanish, but they wouldn't have got the picture. So Jesus put them into the pigs so they can see that 2,000 pigs had enough evil in them. Should I go there? Go to commit suicide? <laughs> I had to go there. We talked about it. She said yes. You know? And then I want to close on this, this point. The challenging thing we have with surrendering our life to Jesus Christ is the people saw this this miracle and they were frightened and they said well that's too much power I don't know if I, I want to be around that you know? when uh, when my mother got saved it was one of the most miraculous transformations I've ever seen in my life so much so that we thought she was crazy that she was crazy for Jesus. And for more than two decades, I didn't want to be around anything like that. Uh, I love Jesus, but that was, that was too much for me to see what my mother became, which was nothing more than a joy-filled, on fire, Jesus lover, who wanted to affect everybody she knew for Jesus. 
And I think sometimes we're afraid of what's going to happen when we surrender to Jesus. Anybody dealing with that? Like, I just want to surrender so far because I can control, I can control my, my spirit. You know, if I surrender everything, you know, I might, I might raise my hands, you know, I might, I might dance like David danced, you know. Uh, I wrestled with that for 20 years, so I'm claiming that. If anybody's in it with me, you know, you're in a good club. But I'll tell you, it kept me from the joy, it kept me from the freedom, it kept me from, from getting rid of all the demons that my life growing up put on me, and I was a Christian. I had hang-ups, and I had darkness, and it's, it's incredible, you know? And this man who had been tortured maybe more than anyone they had been around. Number one, he was fully clothed because he ran around naked for years, you know? And he's just sitting there, probably sitting there with his like, how you doing? It's the guy that was screaming every night. God was cutting himself because he couldn't stand the pain that was going on. I was like, wow, ah, life is good. Life is good. You know, I come in here most weeks and I start my, my message with, uh, it's a great day to be alive. And I believe that. And I feel that. Because I've been delivered. And I'm not afraid of what Jesus is going to do. You know, and uh, as the band comes up to... Uh, close the service um, I want to invite anyone tonight that feels that there's an oppression they've been holding on to and they haven't been able to let go of um, come to the altar tonight you know I don't do this very often uh, I'm going to ask Jerry to come up and uh, I'm going to ask Carol to come up and, uh, and maybe I'll ask uh, my aunt to come up and pray with anyone and um, Jesus said, peace be still to the, the sea and the, and the wind. And peace came to all of creation. And Jesus said to that demon, go. That's all he said. You know, it's not some big prayer. It's not some magic words. We have been given all the authority of the throne of God when we gave our life to Jesus Christ. And when someone stands in authority and prays a power of prayer and you believe in your heart that what is done is done, your entitlements start to flood. You feel peace. And Satan has to flee. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he has to go. Amen? Amen. So I want to close in prayer. We're going to be up here during, during our song tonight. And if you want prayer, we want to pray with you. We don't want you to leave the same way you came in. Jesus came for the one, you know. And the one may be five ones, I don't know. But if you're here and you feel like Jesus won't do something for you individually, tonight he came, he came into the graveyard that is your life, that he wants to speak into your life, he wants to empower you, and he wants you to just get stripped of all the chains, all the oppression, everything that, that Satan has put on you. And, and don't be ashamed if you're a believer because we've all been in that place. I've been in that place where I thought I had a strong faith and, and then there was things that I couldn't sleep at night and, and it was torment, you know, and, and, you, and you try to get through it and you just can't through it. You don't know what's going on. Satan's got little demons that are attached themselves. We want to deliver you tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for the power of your word, the understanding of this, this battle that we're in. Well, that's not all religion. It's not all nice words and, and, and just singing. This is, this is war. This is combat. Paul com com compares it to a wrestling match. And we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But we wrestle with spiritual entities in, in high places of darkness. And Lord, I pray tonight that you've spoken to some here, uh, maybe in a way they've never heard, Lord. Maybe you've invaded a space that the enemy has held on to. Lord, that the very demons that have been, been forced to flee this space for this time Lord, are shaking in their boots because they know people are going to walk out of here different and they will not allow them to come back into their life. But that's our prayer today. Empower those that have been spoken to, to to make a change, to allow you in, but to stand. Put on their armor and stand. 
When the waves come, they stand. And when the wind comes, they stand. And when the enemy comes in, they stand. When the dark thoughts come into their mind, they say, not on my watch. Because Jesus is my Lord and Jesus controls how I think now. And I have joy because I'm supposed to have joy and it's guaranteed me. And I have peace. I'm going to have peace no matter what goes on. Lord, give us an understanding of that power and today change people's lives. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Okay. Um, God is good, amen? Amen. You know? We have a powerful God. And I know he's done an incredible work with many people tonight. Um, but tomorrow's another day, and God gets greater every day, amen? Amen. So let's pray out. Let's uh, have the rest of the coffee, whatever you want to do. Enjoy each other's company. And hold on to what Jesus gave you tonight. Amen. Father, as we leave here, Lord, we just... Uh, we Lord, Lord, I ask your people to, to understand that when they walk out that door, there is nothing that can defeat them. Uh, Lord, that all the things that they've left at the altar here, the things that they've, they've allowed you to come in and eradicate, Lord, there is nothing out there, that, out there that forces them to pick that back up. There's nothing that forces their mind to go to those places. And Lord, that they have every resource in them in the Holy Spirit to just speak power against the things that come against their mind, against their, their thoughts, against their spirit, against their soul. And Lord, also at times that, that they, can, they, can, they can speak power to the things that are affecting their body. Because we know that the, the enemy does move in the physical and affects us in our body at times. And Lord, let us claim the victory in all areas of our life, even physically. But more importantly, in our mind where the battle is really raging all the time. Send them in power. Send them as testimonies to your power that the joy and, and the deliverance they've received here is shown, just like that man was sent by Jesus. Jesus said, I don't want you to come with me, I want you to go back to your village, and I want you to tell them the great things that the Lord has done in your life. Let that be our goal and our heart. We ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.